All we want to do right now is get to Spain to ride some motorbikes, but living in the UK, that is no longer as easy as it used to be. Do you reckon the fuel has to be drained out of the bikes? Uh, in 2020, we ventured over to Spain for a Spanish training camp and it was very easy. All we had to do was load up the van with bikes. Uh, we took a flat track bike and some practice bikes, bicycles, and off we went. We drove to the tunnel, got across. It's about an 18 hour drive on the other side and just ventured around Spain for two weeks, which as a motorbike racer now is really important. When you live in the UK, it's very difficult to train here properly. You can't um, access as many tracks and the weather's obviously not great, so a lot of the tracks are shut. We're due to leave tomorrow. There is still so much to sort out. I'll take you through everything that we need to sort before we go. It's all become a last minute panic when last year or two years ago, it was very easy. So I'll explain all the hoops you have to jump through and all the hurdles we've had to overcome. And then I'll tell you a little bit more about our trip on the way. And fingers crossed we get to Spain because we need to get there for two reasons. One, so Taz can train, so he can become a better rider this year and try and win the British Superbike Championship. And I need to get there because my team is testing in Spain and it's very important that I'm there. So the first job on the list is to wrap the inside of this van. Um, we've got clear windows at the minute and last time we went to Spain, um, we heard a lot of horror stories about people getting followed back from tracks um, and people looking through the windows of the van. Obviously, they can still see in through the front of this van, but we're just gonna try and black these windows out so it gives a bit more protection from thieving people. Terrible start, I've just trod in dog crap on the way in the van. I've literally just cleaned the whole van out and now I've got to clean it out again. <sighs> Take two. Well, as you're probably telling here, it's now quite dark. I have just completely fluked that. Normally whenever I've wrapped anything in the past it's been quite hard but you get away with quite a lot if you just cut it a bit bigger if anyone ever does this job. Cut it a little bit bigger and then you can wedge it underneath the seal rightly or wrongly that's what I've just done. Maybe the other ones will be a little bit trickier because there's a little bit more work in it but I'll crack on with the rest of the van. That's the window tint done, and it's gone far better than I thought it would. It's good from far, but probably far from good. Um, but the main thing is it will keep Spanish people out the back of our van, with a bit of luck. Things we had to do before leaving for Spain that we didn't have to do last time. This time, when we went to go, because of the Covid restrictions, when we were trying to book the trip, you couldn't actually go through France, so that meant we had to try and find another way around. Now, there's two more ways you can go. You can get the boat um, from England to Spain. There's a long boat, I think, from Portsmouth. We looked at trying to book that, and because the French um, option was shut, that was then fully booked. So the next option was to go from England to Ireland. You can either go to Southern Ireland or Northern Ireland, um, and then you can drive down to Southern Ireland to the bottom and get a long boat across that way. So, the other thing you have to take into consideration is carnet forms. If you go to France now, um, from England, or if you go from England to Southern Ireland, you have to now fill out something which is called a carnet form. For people that don't know, you basically just got to um, declare everything that you're taking out of the country, so when you bring it back in, you don't have to pay tax on it when it comes back in, I think. That's what happens anyway. So we went with the option um, of driving all the way up to Scotland and across to Northern Ireland because it was far cheaper for us to do that. If budget was unlimited and we weren't just two lads going on a training camp, we'd um, have happily gone from Holyhead to Dublin, um, but it was a lot more expensive. So it made more sense for us to go up to Scotland and across. That was all the travel sorted. Annoyingly what happened for us was we booked all of our ferries from Scotland to Ireland, Ireland to Spain, and all of the talk of France closing the border and not letting British people in um, got overturned and you could then go in. But by that point it was too late, we'd already booked everything, you couldn't cancel it, so we're committed to going that way now. So that's the way we shall go.
Paul Hollywood, a big fan of mine, didn't even realise. <laughs> and he's a Mackenzie descendant as well. Fun fact. You're on the vlog there. Oh, don't make me any more famous than I already am. I'm being a gang <laughs> You, you just got up at, you've just got up at four, haven't you? You've just done a three hour cycle and now you're just stretching off. I couldn't read because Taz took all the money off them. Oh, you're having a good road trip then. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. We're meeting Mick um, Fee now. Hi, Nan. You all right? Oh, my ear, your ears, my ears must have been burning then. You just said it's a good job you went last night because it's very foggy here this morning. Oh, was it? Is everything all right? It is, yeah. Sorry I didn't come round yesterday. We kind of uh, had a bit of a, a last minute change of plan. <laughs> no, I heard. Anyway, we're on the ferry now. We've just got onto the ferry, so we've got two hours um, down to Belfast, but we've avoided any drama or chaos so well, we'll keep our fingers crossed till you get there thank you we didn't get we set off last night at about nine o'clock and we didn't get to the hotel till about two o'clock in the morning because we got stuck on the m6 for an hour in standstill traffic uh -huh. we've just got on this ferry and john mcphee's on here as well our, our friend and his dad's here yeah, so yeah, your dad said he was going with you so yeah good. yeah so it'll be all right is his dad there as well? Uh, yes, his dad's here as well, yeah. Talk to us when you get there. I will do, I think I'm breaking off, you can't quite hear me. See you later, I'll speak to you in a bit. Bye bye. First leg of the journey done, we've just got from Ken Ryan to Belfast, and then now we're gonna head down through Ireland. Um, possibly gonna meet uh, some people this afternoon in Dublin and then get the long boat tonight which is the 32 hour boat across to Spain. Bumped into John McPhee on that um, ferry there and John's going to meet us later on for food and then we're heading to Cartagena with John because he's riding there as well. So we'll check back in when we're on the next boat. Oh, I've just got back in the driver's seat. It's good that wasn't it? I managed to just slip into the passenger seat. What are your thoughts on the journey so far Taz? Quite enjoyed the ferry. Definitely felt a bit more seasick going backwards than I did going forwards. I don't know if you felt like Yeah, that. I did when I was sat in those seats. Yeah. When I could see out the window. Yeah, that made it worse for me because yeah. we going by. I'm positive for the 33 hour ferry down to. We've heard mixed reviews so far, haven't we? Yeah, the Owen boys have um, said that it's a little bit rough. Kyle Rides told me it's a little bit rough. Lee Johnson said he didn't leave his cabin because he was that seasick. Uh, Kyle said his boat ended up taking 10, maybe hours, 10 longer. hours longer, it was that choppy. Good job I'm here to provide the entertainment just as well. We're now 400 miles into the trip, we're approaching Dublin and we're going to have a quick pit stop to see Jack Kennedy for a cheeky Nando's. Taz is still at the wheel and yeah, that's it. We've made it to the boat, we're in the queue. Uh, I don't know what time, we left yesterday at nine o'clock from England, so we left Thursday basically and we'll arrive Sunday, which was a fairly long trip. But the main thing is, we've made it to this boat and that was the uh, one worry we had so far. Why do kayaks make the best hats? Why? Because they're capsized. Nice. about 10 hours in to the 33 hour ferry. We slept the night in here last night, me, Taz, John and his dad, and we just had some breakfast. And then we basically sit on here all day today, get some food, because there's nothing else to do, and then stay one more night tonight, and then up tomorrow. There's an eight hour drive to go out here tomorrow. This is the room.
turned. Lovely. Uh, basically told stories of John McFinney's dad for 24 hours straight we about just racing. We reminisced. Yeah. For the past 10 years of bike racing. I feel fully Longer, reminisced. Longer, probably 15. Finally here. How many hours is that? How many miles we on? Uh, hours and uh, 55. And it's six o'clock on Sunday. So we left. Nine o'clock Thursday night. And arrived in Spain. Six o'clock Sunday morning. Uh, six o'clock Sunday night. So that was nearly 36 hours. No. Too late in the day for maths like that. 24, 48, 72 hours yeah. to get to Spain. So I'm John McPhee. Hi everyone, I'm Sam Lowe. Hi, I'm Scott Ogden. I'm Leon Haslam. 